for the ever ever evolving field of information security knowledge saying the saying knowledge is power is more apt today than ever before security challenges demand strong cohesion across best of people processes and technology at its heart security operations is about detecting security incidents and responding to them in a timely manner using the most relevant information available but no matter how good organization defenses are uh, a determined hacker or a malicious insider will always be able to get around them today we will understand from information security leaders representing various verticals from the finance industry as to how we can improve or increase accuracy coverage discipline efficiency and productivity of security operations and what these organizations are doing to ensure that they efficiently yes effectively secure the data hi i'm virinchi from data security council of india and i welcome you all to this exciting panel discussion on a warm wednesday afternoon uh, the panel discussion is on security operation excellence accuracy coverage discipline efficiency and productivity for your secops before we start let me introduce to our to you to our esteemed speakers and our, our moderator and our panelists in that order first our moderator for today's discussion a welcome back mr aftab sir sales leader bfsi india and sark tenable welcome sir then we have mr shiv kumar pande group c bsc india welcome sir then we have mr manikant singh ceo of dmi finance mission nilesh dherke uh, cto of gurukul mr biju k head of operational risk and ceo at federal bank and mr neeraj kumar singh head of head of security strategy and engineering at sbi cards welcome gentlemen and uh, hope you have a productive uh, and very exciting uh, 45 minutes ahead of us over to you mr aftab thank you rinchi thank you so much gentlemen welcome and thanks for your time on the stage while every day is a learning for me and uh, this we had a good long session in the morning and there were a lot of enlightening aspects of security and and risk and moderation and everything was coming flow but this particular is quite a quite an interesting one which is going to be and i i absolutely you know look forward to this 40 45 minutes to at least give the audience a very interesting thread which will help them to understand why and why we call it a security operation excellence while this term is a good term but how difficult it would have been from where people have picked up you know senior leaders like you so uh, let's do a small round of introduction for the sake of audience my name is aftab i handle the bank banking and financial vertical business for tenable india and i look for india as well as sark as a business uh, region for for our, for tenable here uh, you know let me hand over to shiv please introduce yourself then we move around please. yeah i am shiv kumar pande i am a group ceo for bsc uh, so bsc being parent companies we have an indian carry corporation limited we have a uh, own technology arm which is called as bsc technology limited then international stock exchanges commodity exchanges and mutual fund companies that uh, it and uh, cyber security is common among all the group of the company. thank you sir manikant hi uh, my name is manikant uh, i head the uh, information security at dmi finance uh, dmi finance uh, is an uh, digital lending company it's an nbfc we have multiple organization including housing finance and uh, uh, alternate investment funds um, currently uh, we are uh, expanding uh, um, pan india and uh, keeping the security in picture we have a lot of portfolio which is coming up So currently, I'm handling all the projects uh, of information security for DMI Finance. Thank you. Thank you, Anika. Neeraj, please introduce yourself. Hi, good afternoon. This is Neeraj Kumar Singh. I am part of SPI Cards, and I take care of security operations, um, uh, new product development, strategy initiatives, etc. At SPI Card. Thank you, Neeraj. Did you please? Good afternoon. Uh, I. Biju, uh, I am the CISO for Federal Bank. I also 
handles the operational risk management of the bank. Uh, the security operation center also reports to me. So that's all from myself. So I look forward for an interactive session today. Thank you, Vijay. Nilesh, please introduce. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, this is Nilesh Ranj. I'm the Chief Technology Officer for Gurukul. Uh, you know, Gurukul is one of the, the pioneers in uh, behavioral analytics and uh, uh, and risk analytics space. And, uh, you know, so we uh, provide solutions for, you know, data science driven security controls to automate, uh, you know, advanced threat detection, remediation and response. Yes. Good. So let's let's start this. Uh, I'll, I'll set up a small context so that everybody knows and the audience is about to hear a, a good, nice speeches together. And this will this will just be about my large security operations is about and responding at time using the most relevant available. Security operations may offer significant benefits, but it also they want some considerable challenges. Now, there are no technologies to help let you to see progress on. Now, if we, if we categorize to be a little philosophical or good practical, I can say security is about processes. Quality security is not just about uh, the strength of the law and the mechanism that make up the anatomy of locks for a power security solution. To complete this system, cybersecurity must also be about enforcing the cost. It's also about uh, the rapid pace of change. It's not just a mindset issue that causes the operational excellence problem. But there is also the fact that technology landscape is so dynamic and is ever changing. Now, because of this ever changing environment, our organization is go and deploy technology must change fast as fast also. It's very important. Uh, and quite frankly, it is hard to have operational excellence when your environment is so constantly changing and embracing new technologies. Uh, some some guidelines which we have in the first session and also from the industry what I know better. Lots of disturbance. Yeah, I, I can hear that. Maybe, yeah, yeah. maybe a mute from everybody's side and then we'll see if it works. Is that okay? Yeah, some it is uh, some echo is coming. I don't know whether anybody in the backstage can help me. Yeah, it's I'll just chat with you. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, yes, yes. So I request all the speakers who are not speaking to go on mute. I think there's an echo because of that. And once you're once you're answering, then maybe you can unmute yourself and the rest. Is that better? All are mute. Okay. Great. So, so I was I was talking about uh, some guidelines for operational excellence. I hope it's not from my side. We can hear you after clearly. Okay. Great. So, uh, start by knowing yourself, which means. Engage in self-analysis to understand what operational excellence should look like one one for you. I mean, it's not, as I said, it's not a silver bullet. Without knowing where the exposures are and how they could be attacked, one is incredibly vulnerable. How customer environment vulnerable and how can CISO efficiently manage and mitigate risk? It's important to have understanding, which means to understand the blind spots. What, what are those blind spots or the product or solutions should have the ability to map the tech landscape and understand where they are vulnerable. Be proactive, of course, not, not being a responsive. And everybody knows that everybody wants to be proactive, in particularly in this piece. Focus on low hanging fruit rather than killing all bees at one time. Now, all these are easy said than done to understand how easy or difficult it is. We'll, we'll have the session. And we have senior leaders hope this, this is going to be insightful. Uh, if anyone wants to add on the overall context, please feel free. And once once we have gone 
to all and everybody is comfortable we'll pick up maybe a couple of questions and see how uh, you know uh, you, you have your view coming forward for the audiences i'll open it to you for any uh, view that you want to set up for the context please go ahead nilesh you want to add something you are on mute nilesh Sorry about that. Yeah, noise. Yeah. What I was saying is that uh, yeah, I think that was uh, uh, there was a good introduction. Thank you, Mr. Ramkumar. Uh, um, yeah, we definitely believe, right, that uh, you know from uh, overall security operations, uh, you know, things have changed drastically in uh, you know in recent times. Uh, you know, especially with the uh, you know with the advent of uh, you know, remote workforce. Uh, you know, the whole shift in. Uh, I still think there's a lot of feedback. I don't know uh, from my end, though. Uh, but in the wake of uh, you know the recent pandemic, uh, you know things have been moved. Uh, you know security teams are a lot more distributed. Um, you know unlike in the past. Um, so you know all of this has you know called for for some of the some of the significant changes in terms of uh, you know how how security operations are. a render today right and uh, you know uh, sort of from the team composition to uh, you know the technologies and the processes that uh, you know that we leverage like you pointed out up uh, so i definitely feel that you know there is a lot of change uh, you know that has uh, uh, you know that's that's forthcoming and um, and it's all, it's for the good right it's uh, you know it's adapting to you know some of the uh, some of the newer uh, you know processes as well as you know helps us mitigate some of the advanced threats that we that we see uh, you know out uh, out there right now Uh, Shivit, you want to add anything? Um, I'm sorry, Shiv. Sorry, Shiv. You go ahead. Okay. Usually, what happens is operations uh, excellence always needs to be something like a standardization or a process. In information security processes and security. But once um, we set up a process and some standardization, the hackers get through very faster. So you need to keep the landscape of your processes and your uh, security standards also a little bit fragile or probably a little bit more flexible, so that um, even uh, the, the offenders can get in more difficult. That is my view. Yeah, hi, Aftab. Yeah, if everyone can mute and maybe. Uh... the echo is again persistent so i am keeping myself mute when others are speaking so i think i, th I th it's better now it's better now okay, okay. and uh, yeah we can we can we can continue sorry neeraj if you want to add anything sure if i see uh, typically um uh, the background that i come from and the way i have seen security operations starting for starting from the year of 2006 onwards so there is a lot of change that has happened over the period of time if you see the traditional way of security operations uh, technology management has gone now people are more centric towards threat detection as a capability and that's the key of uh, whole security operations excellence if you bring it to that bring what the table and people now are in fact organizations or our uh, the management expects that how early and how well how quickly you can detect you can respond and you can recovery may take some time but at least the discovery and the response that has been the key element of uh, the discussions of security security operations over the period of time and major majority of majority of the changes that if you see in last couple of years maybe for two or three years in line when the new technology that the terms of agility came up new technology such as uh, our uba brought up by gurukul or the new solutions which has come up into the market so cti cyber threat intelligence those aspects that has added to the security operations that has also on the foundation of the agility it's all that that we are talking about today or uh, we have been talking about in past few seminars where i have been attending also i've been saying we are talking about the agility we are talking about the visibility we are talking about how quick we are no matter what we are what we do how do we do the bad actors would always stay ahead of us 
but how well we are equipped to understand them how quickly we we detect we respond recover that's the key of the security operations those are the pillars around which security operations are evolving over the period of time that's how i see it over the period of time thank you neeraj it was insightful um did you if you can add something on to add something on this i fully uh, agree to what mr neeraj everybody we are losing you right now 100% which is amit am i audible right now yeah yeah better now yes you are hello better please. yeah so from the earlier period of you know uh, preventing cyber attacks you no know, so now everybody understand that you no know, 100% prevention is a myth and so we have to be uh, continuously monitoring and uh, uh trying to uh, minimize the attacks and if, if anything happens uh, the mean time to detect that and mean time to respond that should be very very low so the organization should be able to reduce the damage of an attack if it happens uh, i know good good thing that you said there was somebody in the morning session he was talking about i was i am and i will be not say i have noted down so that's that's going going to be a very very true sense it's not a log will will lock it and just forget it it's a continuous on toes and and thanks to our leaders like you it's not a easy job in the morning session i also mentioned that our leaders like you your job is like safeguarding rose petal among the thorns you know the bushes of thorns it's so difficult and 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 it's not you know a day or a hour or a or a two hours job it, it's like a continuous improvement that six sigma that we talk probably is running to the people now rather than the processes thank you so much for this view let me let me open up couple of questions which might give us more insight and i'll reach out to shiv uh shiv uh, i mean what are some of those kpis that you use to measure the success of your sock since you have a next gen sock and it's a huge one that you are managing with your entire team how how are you measuring them what are those kpis which which helps you in in shorter span of time to understand that okay where you you are how are your security posture around how do you measure that can you just give us some idea so Just to tell you something about soft exchanges, you know, for if you talk about CIA, the three pillars: confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Even availability is very important, you know, for stock exchanges because how fast you can, uh, you know, communicate and do your transaction is become very important. So time scale and accuracy is very important for any stock exchange in the world. And BSD being uh, national critical infrastructure, the cyber security is become very critical for us. So we have implemented our 24 into 7 next gen SOC operation center with the zero trust cyber security architect just uh, three years back, and this project is includes almost all kind of you know niche technologies whether you talk of identity identity or ETR or you know cognitive and machine learning technology and cyber security UBA decision technology real time forensics so all these things we we are using it and. because the infrastructure is a big so we use mostly an enl ml and or most of the automation kind of stuff you know uh, to save work for us now coming to the kpi front you know uh, for kpi as such no set benchmark for you know top uh, kpi it is almost in a very subjective approach but we follow nis framework on the same when i'm saying nis framework like the the five pillars whether you take insight you know prevention detection response so i'll just categorize it that when i'm talking about the insight you know the number of advisories which is coming you know whether from security you know, or sbc or you take it you know from your um oems or you know the technical field guys so we are checking it how much it is actionable action is done and how much it is pending so these kind of kpis when you are talking about the insight 
prevention you talk about the number of attacks prevented at the perimeter level so we have deployed so many technologies so each technology how much it is prevented at the perimeter level and what is the trend from last three months or last six months so you will come to know roi about you know the same and whether your technology is working on the same we also use lots of you know red team exercise and simulation testing to find out whether the systems or the technology is properly working or not with the you know their you know uh, parameters which is defined you know in the systems now you talk about detection the number of use cases in the sim which we have configured like number of offense and detected and incident rates true positive ratios i'm talking about these are the kpis which we have set you know uh, in the system and the response you know mtd uh, and mtr which is mean time to detect mean time to respond and mean time for investigation see in in cyber security how quickly you can respond you know the incident or the alert that become very important and now this because everything is become real time we are using an al and ml in cyber security to do the you know uh, uh investigation and the real time forensic also and then the fourth category is uh, the last category is which we talk about the you know recovery which is we called as a knowledge management or database like number of lessons is learned the feedback review and other stuff which is a depository for the us apart from this so this is we called as the nist framework because the we have an si partner they also follow up and we are also uh, along with that we keep on enhancing our you know uh, these kpis but there are the others like uptime is there regulatory requirement is very 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 important which we monitors their kpis very closely in the given uh, five systems and their trend analysis one of the very important today is the skill resources that also become a very important so for soc these all things are very important good thank you sir this is definitely a, a very very straightforward question but the answer is is definitely not a very easy one so uh, good good you picked up thank you so much neeraj we want to add something i think um, i fully agree with mr shiva the way how it is being measured now the kpis are quite subjective or rather objective i should be saying kpis are quite objective you get into the percentages but that does not show the right value of your effort or the uh, or uh, the operations that you are doing it True. may be giving you the operational understanding operational excellences but when it comes to the organization that that's good that those kpis are good for from a ciso perspective from a security operations perspective the leaders like that but when it goes up when it comes goes to the regulatory requirement when it goes uh, up to the management those metrics are one liner metrics mm. the total attacks total attacks uh, detected true identified false and the effort those are the three four lines maximum not more than that so now all the the thoughts how it has been revolving around if you see uh, we, we are now defining the metrics metrics or the kpi based on what what is tangible for management to see what can be articulated and in line to that i fully uh, go and agree with the mr shebu how it was explained those the number the low level metrics remains the same the high level metrics goes change it gets changes when it goes uh, beyond ciso excellent thank you so much neeraj uh let me pick up this question with nilesh uh you as a leader ensure accuracy your coverage and discipline productivity throughout your security operations for example you know leveraging ai and behavior analytics so how can a security leader really ensure this the entire coverage discipline and efficiency and productivity knowing that so many challenges are there according to you how how can or rather if you can give some guidelines to your peer what would be the best practices to do in this absolutely right uh, so so it's it's interesting right in terms of uh, you know how do you ensure you know accuracy coverage right um, you know this goes back to you know what some of our my esteemed peers were talking earlier as well right it's very difficult to measure some of the kpis right similarly in terms of you know uh, be it accuracy or coverage uh, you know efficiency um, you know it's it's very subjective as that as well right 
Um, however, we truly believe that uh, you know with AI and behavior analytics, uh, you know you can definitely help improve uh, you know pretty much all of these areas. Right? Um, so, for instance, you know if you look at uh, default uh, in automation, uh, you know it helps you enforce uh, you know discipline and improve the accuracy by standardization, right? By you know removing some of the manual processes, irregularities, um, you know any missteps or things of that nature, right? Um, it will also provide you some other results that will you know fall within the expected ranges, right? So, uh, so basically, it, it helps you from an from an ML standpoint to to determine, like you know how uh, you know as an organization you're faring against against that. Right? Um, you know, you could also use uh, you know AI analytics to uh, you know to look for for deviations in result sets, right? Um, so identify any. Uh, any holes or gaps in your processes, and and that will help you with with better coverage, right? Uh, you know, leveraging analytics, it will it will help you determine if there is any specific area which is uh, you know which is not being monitored or it's generating a lot more false positives, um, you know, as compared to you know some of the other areas within um, you know within your infrastructure. Um, in terms of uh, let's say productivity or uh, or efficiency as well, uh, right? I mean. Uh, it's it will definitely increase, right? Because you know, as you as you fill these gaps, uh, you know, reduce some of these process exceptions within within your SOC. Uh, you know, it will ensure that you know the you know your team overall as well as the process that you have laid out is uh, you know it's going to be a lot more efficient, and uh, and it's going to be a lot more productive as well. Right? Um, also, another thing, uh, you know, going back to some of our earlier conversations, right, and uh, you know what Mr. Manikant said, as well as uh, you know even Mr. Neeraj, right, it's a, it's a very dynamic environment that that you are that we are living in currently, right. Uh, you know, also, uh, you know, while we are talking about you know AI and uh, and machine learning as as security practitioners. Uh, you know, um, so are the the adversaries as well, right? I mean, it's not like they are <laughs> trying to get into our uh, you know cybersecurity infrastructure using rules, right? So now, so it's sort of a battle between you know sort of uh, you know two AIs, right? Or uh, you know, <laughs> uh, like two robots fighting fighting against each other in like a science fiction kind of a movie. Um, you know, it's <laughs> it's interesting, but but that's the you know that's the nature of the beast right now, right? So um, so I truly believe that uh, you know in in that realm, uh, you know, even the techniques that we leverage or what have you, right? Uh, you know, that has to be, you know, one step ahead of, you know, what um, have been leveraging by, uh, you know, our adversaries, right? Uh, you know, there have been instances where number of our customers, you know, within, you know, within our platform as well, uh, you know, wherein we have, uh, you know, some sort of an adversarial network built into the platform, right? So that helps you sort of, you know, test some of the, uh, you know, uh, some of the efficacy or, or the efficiency, you know, of the analytics that you have put in place, right, to, to safeguard your infrastructure, right? And and that's the need of the hour, right? Um, so there are various ways, uh, right? And, uh, but, you know, definitely, you know, AI and, and machine learning is the way, uh, you know, to go forward. Uh, you know, we truly believe, and you know, we have coined a term called as model-driven security, and and what that is is essentially using uh, you know behavioral models, uh, right, to to enhance your security posture, right, uh, overall. Uh, you know, using behavioral analytics as well as uh, you know risk scoring to generate that one holistic risk score, uh, right, in order to uh, you know determine you know. Uh, like uh, you know, Mr. Uh, you know, Shiv Kumar also said uh, earlier uh, during our discussion as well, right? That uh, you know, it's faster, you know, time to response in terms of uh, you know, be it uh, some of the KPIs as well. It's uh, you know, it's very subjective or objective how you take it. Um, you know, so all of these uh, are are fairly uh, important, and I think that's going to be fundamental to you know, sort of the next generation uh, security infrastructure, uh, you know, that we all lay out. Thank you, Nilesh. I, I absolutely agree to this, and and uh, it it reminds me of something that uh, some time back I went to a doctor with a medical sheet of mine saying that these are my reports. He he looked at some n number of line items, and he says that just take this medicine and meet me after a week. I said, what happens to the other one where I have some red lines? I said I can address immediately what comes in my mind, which is vulnerable. We'll see other things later. If you start looking at the entire piece, probably you'll end up with some other problem, which I will not have an answer around it. So, you know, very true when a discovery and response, as, as this was discussed in this forum, and visibility and agility, all those things, and I, as you rightly said, you identify and you, you look for a corrective action, which is zero, near zero, you know, lag or, or a, a, a real time, etc. Absolutely a good position to. I, I have a question on this AI and ML particularly. When 
we of course in our product also this piece is there and it is helping a lot of customer and everybody is not bringing about this but many a customers when i will go and speak to customers they feel that ai and ml is is now getting into every product as a buzzword so what is your answer about it because this this is something which i'm sure or, 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 you know uh, the people who are listening to you will gain with this answer and people have this in mind can you help us on that piece anilesh uh, i think i i talked about this few years back as well uh, right when um, and obviously right about you know we were one of the pioneers of the of the UEBA space you know brought in the whole concept of ml and behavior analytics but uh, but again right ml has become an overloaded term right uh, you know and it happens right i mean you know in our industry sometimes it's it's cloud sometimes it's uh, you know ml you know there are lots of things right that are happening um how uh, from an from an ml standpoint again right i mean you know there are a lot of products which are talking about let's say ml or, or ai a lot of technologies uh, you know which are out there um, you know and that's why you know earlier on uh, right i mentioned also that you know risk scoring and 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 generating sort of that uh, you know what is the risk within just because something is is abnormal within my organization right doesn't mean that it's risky right these are two different things right uh, you know uh, a common example that I, i typically share is that you know if you if you see someone let's say you know um, running with you know big bags in the in the airport right and and running fast doesn't mean that you know he is you know he's an attacker or what have you right maybe he's just missing his flight right so the context overall from you know various different uh, you know uh, uh, threat tools out there in our cybersecurity infrastructure is important uh, you know going back to your earlier point as well right when doctor looked at you know the list of you know all of these different ailments and you know he point he been pointed one saying that this is what you need to fix right and that is basically what uh, you know is is important right so even if you know there are ml that's used in in you know is into various products or what have you right it's it's sort of bringing it all together um you know uh, overlaying that with with the correct context uh, you know generating one holistic sort of a, a risk score or a risk number which can then help uh, you know our soft teams to to ensure that you know they take the right action and faster action on on the relevant uh, you know threat patterns thank you neeraj Let, let's pick this up uh, from biju uh, when we talk about security operations biju platforms such as so threat intel come in mind right how can bank or any financial institute decide which platform to buy or invest in what is the approach when you select any of these technologies if you can give us some idea on this yeah after that's an interesting uh... identifying an appropriate solution is not an easy task so it depends on various factors so but you know in this scenario when we talk about soar so there are many points which we will have to look at uh, so basically you know, soar will not be the uh, first organization will be looking at from a security operations perspective so they will, every organization i believe when they look they will be trying to migrate to the so they already will be having some basic at least some basic infrastructure and on on top of that trying to migrate to a next level so basically what we have to look at early is that no so how good getting getting integrated with the existing solutions that is basically the same solution there are there will be a host of other security solutions which will be there in the institution currently so how easy is to integrate with the, all of that whether the uh, solution which we are looking at supports that integration and if it supports whether it is scalable uh, because we will have to look at at least over a 3 to 5 year period we will have to look at how that solution will support us help us in integrating so that should be one of the primary aspects that we should be looking at so then in addition to that you now there are many points which we have to look at so like you know the primary primarily what we will be looking at from a soar is to automate end to end that is the security orchestration automation response when we say that uh, the right from analyzing the alert generated uh, deciding on the course of action to be taken by the solution itself so while uh, theoretically it will be possible for uh, certain cases Uh, and we should be uh, um, able to understand that in all cases end to end automation may not happen so there will be many cases where the analyst will have to manually look into the case 
take a decision so so the solution should be in a position to support an end to end orchestration as well as uh, the analyst getting in midway taking his intelligence taking a decision so both the, uh, the it should be supported by the source solution so like this there are many points so similarly the solution should have some out of the box playbooks because many security solutions which will be used across the industry will be common or similar so there should be some out of the box uh, playbooks which are supported by the source solution but having said that every organization will have their own specific tools also or custom applications custom tools also so there should be a flexibility for having custom playbooks also so like that no the overall flexibility and scalability should be the primary concern then one uh, point which we have seen uh, specific we need for an actual scenario to happen and check with that that is triggering or whether we can test that early and ensure that the rule we have written or in a sore kind of environment the playbook which we have written is end to end perfect whether it will take care so a facility for simulating the testing environment also will be a very much value added advantage from a solutions perspective then some of the other aspects like you know the based on organization appetite so the deployment can be like you no know, it can be an on from uh, deployment which one uh, institution may be looking at while the other one may be looking at a kind of you know, cloud based approach so the kind of flexibility uh, regarding deployment so these are some of the points which quickly comes to my mind when we look at a solution uh, particularly for uh, secure orchestration so that is from my said uh, thank you viju quite a nice detailed explanation i i really like this because this is this is one piece where whenever we go and you know have a candid talk with customers or consultants many times this is a point of contention that whether we want to start a small or we want to you know make a big bid and start which is which is of course huge cost and time and everything uh, some choose to take baby steps and then you know strengthen one piece and then move to the other one absolutely as i rightly said exactly in, exactly it's it's like everyone's own way of looking from the scanner what is important and what do they want to take it as a next step for strengthening themselves however there'll be there'll be a lot of different vibes and varieties coming in the market and talking what one should do but you are control of your house and nobody else knows better than you that's my belief always uh thanks thank you exactly. yeah yeah so true so shiv uh, if i have to come to you for a small verification on this piece that uh you also feel that the entire setup needs to be in place in one shot or you feel that picking up you know a smaller piece and strengthening and then creating a large next gen sock is the idea in your in your environment or your industry what you do what is your view i believe it's a journey you know from uh, in a traditional soft to the next gen soft but there are some of the new technology which makes you know that yes uh, we are the next gen soft there are such no definition is there but just to tell you man you want one way you want to save card whatever you have invested and uh, but uh, cyber security is so dynamic in nature the technology is also keep on going in absolute in very short period of the time and so Uh, that too also big challenges so in our case like we have purchased you know the bundle of the solution in one shot because our 70 to 80% of the technology is going on an absolute and we wanted to safeguard the existing technology also and we have purchased one shot the usp is that we have chosen technology in such a way that they should be integrated with the existing one also and the whatever we have, we have purchased that to also be integrated with each other The, the features might may be differ but once it is integrated then only you will you will you know get the exponential benefit out of the same so one is is tightly integrated as you know uh, biju said store might may be you know one of the thing to the atom but there are there are so many ml and ml and with the help of this ml and ml ml you can automate many process without uh, you know using the tool example like you know apply peers and this can be integrated so whenever malware is come your uh, endpoint is automatically isolated and engineer go go, uh, go and uh, you know work on the same and the log will uh, incident will be also you know uh, there are so many things 
said that. But something is that you know, we, use, we should use ALM, AL and ML, subscribe to the multiple threads which shall create real-time basis rather than doing, you know, the manual basis. Because now the industry is so fast, I mean, it's so fast you can't do it manually. And you know, uh, most of the things, especially on the protection level, should be automated. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So, everybody is moved. My next question, let me be with Neeraj. I want to give you a tough one, the ROI. ROI is something, something that everybody, the first thing people, when I go to sales, will I get ROI? What is your approach? How do you calculate ROI? When, when you use, you use any platform relation. Indeed, it is a difficult one, but uh, in this time of Corona, if you see COVID, uh, this is much easier to explain, uh, at least. Uh, it is something like that asking me that what is the ROI of the mask that you wear, right? It's, it's as simple as that to explain that, but it, it's simple. The ROI differs uh, based on the industry to industry, organization to organization. Uh, for us, who are financially, uh, let's see that we are uh, regulated industry now and not now, we are regulated industry, our uh, ROIs are much more intangible. It's something like uh, the cost of not wearing a mask in public place in Delhi is like 2000 rupees. In Haryana, it is 500 rupees. Right. So it, what, what do we do with by wearing, not wearing a mask? We just avoid the cost. It's actually... Uh, over the period of time and people like us who comes from the technology background, not the management background, get into the security and now people are asking us to uh, look at the ROI, how to calculate this, how do we measure this. This has always been a difficult question to answer, if you see. why That's my perspective again. And But it is indeed, this is also a fact that uh, all the sponsors, when it comes to the project, they really want to know the, if the investment is really financially justified. And all this, most of most of these discussions, these decisions are made prior to the budget allocation is done for a project or solution. But no, the way I have been seeing this for uh, financial organizations who are regulated, this is intangible. As I have said, that this is intangible. So now in our cases, it comes uh, more of an ROSI. If you see uh, the buzzword that has coming up over the period of time, and thanks to the Techies who have bought this, uh, who were not able to sustain the ROI factor. That what is the return on the security investments rather than the return of the investment? So we are talking about the return on the security investment. It's more about uh, the cost avoidance, which is the value of the platform, and that is always demonstrable. If you see, if you see, these are these costs are not something objective that if I invest this much, this much I'm going to get in return. But it's more of the value that the solution demonstrates. And each of the solution, if you see, uh, over the period of time, in fact, at, uh, in our organizations also in the previous, uh, the number of projects that I have uh, gone through or I have executed, all those questions were very prominent. Some of them had very objective-driven financials value to it. There were some of some of them were, which was pure play regulated, mandated industry where you do not have ROI. You do not have yes or no choice. If RBI says that you should have a SOC running, you should have a SOC running. If RBI says that you should have uh, practices for security event monitoring, you should have security event monitoring. You do not show that, uh, if you see, uh, the ROI of that. It's more of the sustainability of the business and uh, the cost that you avoid, avoid, the penalty that you try to avoid. So the term of the security ROI is now moving towards again, if you see uh, over the period of time, on what do we avoid instead of what do we get in return. So of course there are uh, certain parameters if I say, uh, and for each of the solution, let's say for the SOAR we were talking that what was that incident well time that prior to SOAR uh, our organization had and what is the incident time the, after the SOAR the organization had. The cost of the incident probably after before putting up behavior analytic solutions and now the cost of incidents of course that's also a factor that how many incidents what is the cost of those incidents? Probably an incident happening in India fintech uh, will have a high, uh, different number of penalty associated to it. The cost of privacy or the breach in USA has a higher number of penalty. But the GDPR, it's 
more higher number of the penalty so it's more about the avoidance of the cost that we do instead of looking at that what do we get in the in the return of it perfect thank you neeraj it was a nice one uh, manikant the next question for you uh, we want to give you a idea of thinking change so how has the distributed work teams challenged security leaders to think about security operational excellence how has the thinking change over past year or so what is your view manik so i'll summarize uh, giving the uh, you know time and picture see uh, for security guys there was only one thing which was a very very crucial thing was patching uh, the firewall um, having the systems in place but with the distributed environment of uh, having security in every place now every home has become an option for everybody so the distributed environment has totally transformed the way we started thinking about security uh, though we all still work on patching and uh, keeping the antivirus updated uh, still there is a long way to go uh, there are technologies which has been helpful in this um, pandemic but the only thing which i have seen um, uh, transformed is um the the things have started con- getting consolidated there were um, 10 systems we were working on now we are started focusing on only one system which can ensure that even in future pandemic situations we will be able to address these type of uh, difficulties um there are still in india the infrastructure is still a problem network connectivity we can see even in our uh, you know all of us uh, events still it's a challenge uh, apart from uh, network connectivity there are uh, you know uh, supply chain issues uh, there are uh, uh, you know, training issues so addressing all these things has become uh, there are get, there are many platforms who are coming together and getting consolidated uh, and uh, giving us uh, better solutions so one thing which i want to um, which would, if, you, if you want me ask me in one line what has transformed or what is getting changed is the way we started uh, our journey is now totally different from what now we are going here so in future there will be nothing called as uh, um, office and uh, environment and all the stuff now every home is an environment every wifi is become have to be secured so the total transformation will become uh, you know digital uh, you know neo neo digital uh, security excellent manikans i mean you have told the right pulse at this moment what we are talking uh, i mean there is nothing we can talk about i uh, know more than this and and you have you have summed up very beautifully thank you so much i think we are little over time but we are well on time thank you so much for your prompt responses and sweet responses if covid has not been there i would have loved to walk across to you and shake hand and have a cup of coffee around with you but i'll ensure when time comes and nilesh when you are in india <laughs> thank you so much <laughs>